Hi, it's Tom here from Foam Data Services and today I thought we would do a, a battery guide as I know that there are many people out there who look at my channel for my electrical mods so I feel that uh, it's about time that I went through batteries for Nerf and why we do and don't use certain types of battery in our builds. So we're starting our battery guide with this little sucker right here which is a consumer cell and it's a standard alkaline chemistry. Now, contrary to what advertisers would have you believe about alkaline batteries, um, most of them are fairly similar. So if you're paying extra money for a named brand battery, um, if you explore the performance data on those, you often find that actually the most expensive batteries are around the middle area for performance. There are some that are very, very good that do cost a little bit more. And I'd advise you to look at the links in the bottom of this page. There's a, a link there to an AA battery test that was done independently and was far more rigorous than the sort of tests that most battery manufacturers do. So it's, if you're buying these, then don't waste your money on the expensive ones, because generally the cheap ones work the same. Now, the big problem with these little suckers, and they come in different sizes, and uh, we can see we've got a C-cell here too, as seen in the Rapid Strike, is that uh, they do drop off, and when we look at batteries, we look at the discharge curve, and the discharge curve for these fellas looks a little like this. So up here you have volts, and along here you have time. And uh, in one of those little alkaline cells, it starts at 1.5 volts when you buy it. The minute you switch it on, it turns down to 1.2, and then it drops off a cliff from there. As you can see, your voltage drops fairly quickly on one of those cells, and uh, the more load you put on it, the steeper this curve is. So if you're putting a bigger motor load on this side on time, then expect your voltage to drop off much more quickly. So the next step up, from your little consumer cell is one of these and this is a consumer rechargeable. There are some very good models available in these consumer rechargeables. The Sanyo Eneloop and the Senibor are the current market leaders. This is an Energizer consumer one which isn't bad, it's okay. And these are useful for things like RM2s if you must use them. Um, or in a situation where you might have something like a Tamiya uh, Mac Dash and you want to retain the standard battery tray where you've got a low voltage motor which doesn't need a lot of juice. But these have got a fair capacity. And when we look at the discharge curve for those, it's slightly different again. So here's the discharge curve again. Quick diagram here. And you'll notice that the drop off, initial drop off isn't as steep and then the discharge curve is a gradual drop down over time. Um, and that isn't as bad as a alkaline battery because they have a lower internal resistance and a higher capacity. So you're seeing a slightly better performance from those. Now, Nerf has then discovered lithium chemistries and the classic fire battery. Now, these little fellas here um, are a classic fire cell. They're very cheap. They have uh, an incorrect capacity on them. They doubt they're very much doubt they're 1,200 milliamp hours. They're probably near a 600. That figure will be um, at probably t about 5 degrees C, whereas the ambient temperature, if it's higher, the capacity is lower. So those are often subject to inflated claims. Now these are um, offering a higher voltage and they're a different chemistry, they're a lithium chemistry. Uh, this is an unprotected truss fire um, because you can't get the protected ones to work in NERF, which tells you a lot because if you're tripping the overload protection, then something's not right. Now these were initially used to give a drop-in way of increasing the motor speeds in early flywheel blasters um, and for increasing the rates of fire on some of the um, AEG blasters like the Vulcan and the Stampede. Um, nowadays, for most modern applications, these are defunct. Um, however, you do get quite a nice discharge curve with those. If we look at purely on the voltage um, and discharge curve, all lithium batteries, you start to get this sort of voltage curve, which is a lot flatter, as you can see. That should possibly be a little bit flatter out this end, but I drew these in quite a hurry. So you can see here that in comparison to the other battery, it will stay actually at its operating voltage. Now the big problem with these is not the voltage, it's, not the, it's, the, it's the discharge rate. Now when we look at batteries, the key terms that we look at are capacity, voltage and discharge rate. Now discharge rate is measured in C, so if we take something like this one, which is a Liffey pack, you can see here on the pack it says 30C. Now, 30C means that it can discharge 30 amps current continuously from the battery. 
Now, that is a sizable amount of current and that will run most things in Nerf. If we take one of these little fellas here, you will be lucky to get 1C out of that, to be honest, compared to this, or even compared to these, which I'm coming to in a minute. Um, these have a very, very low discharge rate, which means that they can, although they have voltage, they cannot provide ampage, and ampage is your key thing. Ampage is what makes your motor turn with more torque and respond quicker. Voltage makes it spin higher, um, but it's not really giving you that oomph which you want from your battery system. So, the reason that these are no good is, first of all, because they're not very good quality, and I don't like using junk. They may be cheap, but there are just as many other cheap batteries out there that can provide far better quality than fire cells. They're also too low a capacity, and if you're running something onto the point at which the protection circuit cuts in, you are overusing that battery and you are putting yourself at risk. So I think these are dangerous because they're just not designed for what we're using them for. They're fine in things like LED applications and high power flashlights where their um, characteristics of relatively high voltage and low discharge rate are fine. But in Nerf, they're just pointless. So we're going to take those two out because they're not something I think you should use. Now, the next development on from those is these. Now, I am one of the people who championed the use of these in Nerf, and this is an IMR battery. It's another lithium chemistry. Only this one is specifically designed, and even says so on here, as a high-drain lithium battery. Now what that means, you can see it's not lithium-ion, it's lithium-manganese, so it's a different chemistry, it's still lithium, and it's still a 14500 cell, so it'll still fit into your battery tray, and it still uses all of the standard battery tray fittings, and it has a little button on the end. This is the equivalent, discharge-wise, of about five of these. So one of these can discharge far higher rates, and again, you'll get this kind of discharge curve on that battery, so very flat, but it'll be able to sustain that discharge curve up to about 10 amps. So your little ultrafire will be screaming in pain at 10 amps. And uh, if it's a protected ultrafire, it'll just simply switch itself off because it won't be able to cope with the discharge. So those are a much higher discharge rate and uh, they, have, they can be used in all of your truss fire chargers. So if you've already invested in truss fires in the past when they were a thing, you can upgrade to these with relatively little pain. They're not cheap. Um, these are about $10 for two, these little 14500s, or if you're in the UK, they're about £7.99. EFEST are a pretty reputable brand and uh, generally not cloned very often, so they're fairly useful. Um, now, these have 700 milliamp hours on, and you're going to say, oh, yeah, man, that's not much capacity. Well, that's true, but that 700 milliamp hours capacity is a true capacity based on their room temperature operation. So, where that one said 1200, this actually is honest and tells you what you actually get. So, those are quite useful if you must retain your battery trays. Now, uh, the next step up from those is a pack. Now, when you say to people, why don't you run your Nerf gun on packs, they all think of a big sucker like this. You know, a, a big old school C cell NICAD. Now, if we look at this one, that's a four or five C, so it's it's not a great discharge rate. But these these were the sort of packs that were around a long time ago for RC. I mean, I remember these when I was a kid, and I'm old. So we can put that to one side because we're not using anything like that. Now, to give you an idea of the kind of stuff you can get out of these packs, if we look at this little fellow over here. This is my preferred battery pack for Strice, and as you can see, if you look at it, it's not much longer and it's not much thicker than a 14500 cell. So that is a tiny pack, and these are available from Hobby King, and they're used in the remote control um, helicopter hobby. And this one has a Dean's connector on because it gives me a bit more space inside the blaster. They fit a little bit better than the XT60. Now, if we look at this, 20 to 30 C discharge. So this will take up to 30 C discharge, so that is 30 amps. It won't last long at 30 amps. Now that is easily enough to power um, up to a pair of 180s in a strife without really breaking a sweat. Now it's quite low capacity at 800 milliamp hours. There is also this one, which is a little bit bigger, and um, that one is a real swine to fit in the battery tray without cutting. Um, and you're only getting 200 more MAH. So what I've taken to doing is, if I'm playing a day game and I'm feeling I'm going to get a lot, a lot of you, so if you were doing day HVZ and you had a night mission and a full day's combat, you'd probably want to take an extra one of these um, in a rigid pouch of some kind. Now I often use these guys for carrying around my um, 14500 cells, and uh, this is what camera 
people used to carry their batteries in, but if you get any kind of box to keep your lithium batteries in, because everyone knows about lithopolymer batteries, um, if you puncture them they can have a self-oxidizing lipo fire, and this is what makes people afraid of them. Um, but I say that if you are puncturing a cell, I mean this is a hard thing, if you are putting a nail through that then you are some kind of idiot and you shouldn't be playing with anything, let alone any kind of projectile launcher. To puncture one of these is requiring an awful lot of effort, you've got to take a screwdriver or something sharp and you've got to ram it through there. So if you're that stupid then don't play with electrical blasters, go and beat yourself over the head with a stick and do us all a favour. So, this little fella here, if we compare it to our friend the Ultrafire, okay, I'm going to need an entire box of these, like 30, to get anything like the discharge that you can get out of here. So, that's a stripe pack. Now, those of you who are alarmist about um, LiPo, this is a more modern nickel metal hydride pack, and this uses subsea. This is a subsea pack. Now, this will fit comfortably into the battery tray of a rapid strike, and uh, this is an 8.4 volt subsea pack, and it's a maximum discharge of 25 amps, so it's only 25C. A really, 20C is probably the limit for this little guy. Um, this one is sporting a Traxxas connector because that's what I was using at the time and I keep Traxxas for NICAD and I keep uh, XT60 or Deans for LiPo now so I can make it stops people plugging the wrong blasters in, uh, into the wrong packs. So this one's a really useful little pack actually, you can get quite nice performance out of this um, and it gives you a nominal 8.4 volts, it won't cause runaway firing on a rapid strike uh, on 130 motors and you'll get pretty nice performance from that, so if you're a bit concerned about LiPo then this might be the pack for you. Now, the other chemistry we hear a lot about is Liffy chemistry. Now this is a big Liffy pack, they make them smaller, this is a really large Liffy pack and this is the one that powers, powers the Reaper. Now the reason this is so big is because it's quite a high capacity and capacity is measured in milliamp hours and a milliamp is one thousandth of an amp and that basically gives you an idea of how long it will go on for. Now these have a massively high charge rate and they have very very low internal resistance like all lipo chemistries so it's not very hard for the cell to push out the juice and uh, I would note if you look at the size of wiring on this pack okay you can see how thick that wire is this is the balance lead which is designed to make sure that all the cells are charged the same level when you charge them on the charger and this is the output lead. Now if you've got crummy 20 AWG wire in your blaster and you look at these proper packs, even the nickel metal hydride here has quite a substantial piece of wire attached to it. That's a silicon insulated wire and that's an 18 AWG silicon insulated wire. So if you're talking about rewiring your blaster and you're using stuff like this, which is 20 AWG, you're putting that through it, just not going to cut it. This is 12 AWG to give you an idea on this bad boy. And that's why we use such thick wires in our rewiring is because we want the best possible current path and we want the least possible resistance. And uh, the advantage about Liffy as a chemistry is that it's more stable than LiPo. Um, it's less prone to nasty self-oxidizing fires and smoking itself. So it's a slightly, they call them a safe chemistry, um, LiPo. And it's a bit like a pack version of, of, of this fella, which again is safer than the Ultrafire. But the downside about uh, Liffy's is that they are in limited sizes, so finding the right size packs for um, blasters can be difficult. So these are 3.3 volts per cell and these are 3.7 volts per cell. So you're talking about a much more limited voltage range, which means that you're generally using a 3S pack for most Nerf applications, which is awkward because the 3S packs don't come in small sizes. That's why I prefer LiPo. But if you're a safety conscious person and you want a rapid strike that's on 130 motors and you're prepared to put a little bit of um, resistance into the pressure circuit like a diode to drop the forward voltage a little bit. You'll need at least one diode for one of these because runaway firing will definitely be a problem. This puts out 10.4 volts when it's fully charged. Now the chemistry for these looks like that. It's a very flat discharge curve and uh, you get peak performance pretty much all the way until it drops off a cliff. So those are a very useful cell and they're what powers things like the Tesla Roadster. Um, so they're a very very popular cell for high energy electric vehicles. So, we've gone through all the basic cell types that you're likely to want to use, and uh, this is my current favourite rapid strike pack, and this is a 40C LiPo, it's 2200, and you can see that that is not much bigger than two of those standard AA cells, that is not a big pack by any means, and it's not very thick, that will easily fit into the front battery compartment of a rapid strike, you have to remove the tray, 
and I'll just show you what that looks like. So here's the battery tray and uh, in the front there are two screws and this is your front part of the rapid strike, the front plate that you unscrew. You undo those two screws, push that tab out, yank your tray out and you're done. So if you think that that is 40C, that pack currently is under $10. Now, people say, oh yeah, ultrafires, yeah man, I like them because they're cheap. Well, that's fine. But if you think you'd have to buy 40 ultrafires to get close to the discharge rate of that, to me, it's just not economic. And that is a wonderful pack, and that produces really nice zippy performance off 130 motors. You get high 90s FPS. Um, you may even break the ton if you've got really, really good heavy deposits on your flywheels and uh, that is just a beautiful little pack to use. There are other makes, I just happen to have these because they're from Hobby King. Now, the other battery that people go on about sometimes is this, which is the 9 volt PP3 cell. Now, this has no place in Nerf, okay? The problem with these is, if you look at the capacity, okay, this is a nickel metal hydride one, this is the one that powers my chronograph. 250 milliamp hours, now that is nothing. Um, let's put this into context. 2,000 milliamp hours, 250 milliamp hours. That's a tiny capacity, and that is probably less than. Well, that'll be well less than 1C. It just will not be able to deliver the current that you're after. I mean, you, you're talking about trying to power. I suppose the nearest thing would, that I can think of would be if you have a big block V8 and you stick the carburetor from your dad's lawnmower on it. That's pretty much what you're doing. If you're using this to power a Nerf gun then God help you because you've got no sense whatsoever. They really are useless. So I'm sorry if that's your idea of high power and it will make your motors sound buzzy for about 30 seconds until it runs out of juice. But for God's sake, don't use these. They're just ridiculous for Nerf. They're good for smoke alarms, which could save your life, but they're lousy for Nerf blasters, so leave those well alone. Right, now I hope that's covered all of the main types of battery and uh, the reasons why we use them. And uh, if, as usual, if anyone has any questions or whatever, please feel free to comment and uh, I will try and answer all of those. And uh, the next thing we're going to look at today is at some point this week, I'm hoping to do you guys an internals guide to the rapid pistol.